Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. Today we're gonna to have a look at a recruitment video for the Flat Earth Movement by Mark Sargent called, Are You Sure? Now Mark is going to use the stages of death and dying by Elizabeth Cooper Ross to describe a paradigm shift in science from the globe earth model to the flat earth model. I'm going to let him go ahead and do that, but I'll address that a little bit later. And I'm going to use something that was put out recently by Dr. Todd Grande, the seven myths of the flat earth movement. And I'll be interjecting those as we go through the video. And all seven of those myths will be listed in the description for this video. So let's go ahead and cue up the music and let Mark get started. If you look online for the five stages of grief, the most common breakdown is as follows. Denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. As I was walking the other day, my mind drifted to future debates with members of the academic community. Okay, so right off the bat, what Mark is doing here is he is setting up this debate. It is us versus them. Like the first few moves on the chessboard, the opening lines of the Flat Earth debate seem to start out the same way. The scientist says, well, as any reasonable, well-educated person will tell you, the Earth is a globe. It's just common knowledge. So what Mark's doing here is he's building a straw man. He's presenting this scientist who is now talking down to us by implying that we aren't educated or we don't have common sense. So he's going to be the champion of you in the audience. And I say, of course it is. We've all been told this since we were children. I believed it as well. And really, so did almost everyone in the Flat Earth community. Until one day we didn't. You state that it's a globe. Are you sure? Okay, so now what Mark's doing is he's trying to set up this skepticism argument. Yeah, we used to believe that when we were indoctrinated. But now we've seen the true light of the one true faith. I mean, uh, model of the Earth. And by the way, yes, we are sure. We've been to space. We look back at the Earth. It's round. We checked. The scientist's first response to this is always the same. Knee-jerk and immediate. The world is not flat. It's a globe. Thousands of other scientists all over the world will agree with me, citing mountains of empirical data using multiple tests that it is 100% spherical. Even considering the archaic idea that the world is flat is nothing short of educational incompetence, bordering on a deliberate anti-intellectual movement that if went unchecked would plunge us into darkness and bring about the end of civilization as we know it. Okay, so not only are flat earth people incompetent and stupid, they are a danger. And that was the seventh of the myths. That somehow they're a danger because of this expanding movement will undermine all of the powers that be in the scientific community. No, I don't think so. And I say, I understand your unwillingness to look at it. As a member of the scientific community, your globe conditioning goes years past the average man on the street who only had to look at the silent globe sitting in their classroom for 12 years. Plus all the infinite space programming from news and entertainment media that continued all the way until now. Doggone it, Mark, you, you caught us. I'm a doctor. Look at all those years I wasted in school. Tell you what, you have a heart attack, find a Boy Scout. Let's just say 
that you could resist the impulse to look away and examine the evidence, would you still say it was a globe? Are you sure? Well, yep, we've been to space. It's drowned. We checked. It really is. And the scientist's tone deepens. It is insulting that you or anyone would even ask such a question. My beliefs aren't based on science fiction, but science fact. Anyone that believes otherwise should be forced into strenuous psychiatric tests, followed by electroshock therapy. And if that doesn't work, the retarded, uneducated, delusional soul should be put down. Uh, no. I don't really think people think that flat earthers should be put down. Alright, you guys aren't mad dogs. Now, here's the problem that we have with the flat earth. You say the earth is flat, we present 12 different things that show you that it's not flat, and it can't be flat, and then you put out a video the next week saying the same 12 things that uh, we just disproved. You, it's listening. It's understanding. It's connecting the dots that causes frustration. It's not that we don't like you or think that you are mentally ill or anything. Very smart people sometimes don't have common sense. People talk about that all the time. Very smart people sometimes just don't have a knack for inductive reasoning. As a matter of fact, one of my favorite sayings is that there are two types of people in the world. Those that can draw conclusions on incomplete data I don't know why this idea upsets me more than any other fringe concept, but I feel compelled to insult the person introducing the topic to me. Science is right, whether you believe in it or not. And I say, I understand your anger, your frustration. Flat Earth implies that the most important core concept of science, that being the properties of the world itself, are in question. And if that is the case, then every other aspect of science, from all the studies of the ground below us to the mysteries of the sky and beyond, have to be re-examined. Well, no, Mark, that's not what it is, okay? We understand a lot about the ground below us. We have satellites in the International Space Station in space above us, and we've been to the moon. These are givens. These are facts. What we have an issue with is people that reject facts in favor of their own ideology or narrative. And that, my friend, is what the Flat Earth Movement is. No one wants to start over from the ground up. And scientists have been, well, sitting together for a very long time on a high metaphorical perch never questioning what would happen if the foundations that their institution was built on weren't as solid as they had always thought. Okay, now this is a good time to bring up one of Dr. Grande's points, and that's skepticism. Now, both science and the Flat Earth could be considered skeptics. There's a difference, however. I don't need to believe that the Earth is a globe. I look at the evidence, and it tells me that it's a globe. I'm fine with that. If the evidence told me it was a diamond, I'm fine with that. That's what the evidence says. In the flat earth movement, the earth must be flat. You have to believe that it is a specific shape, and that shape is flat. But if you could put aside that anger just for a few moments, would you still think it was a globe? Are you sure? Yep. And the scientist's eyes grow desperate and strained. Look, he says, I'm not blind to the secrets that men in power keep. I'm not ignorant to the idea of sinister conspiracies in the world. I've known people like you, thinking that nothing can be trusted. Heck, I've had friends who have gone down those roads. Was 9-11 an inside job? Did a lone gunman kill Kennedy? Was Pearl Harbor a setup to win the war? All these things I can look at with reasonable criticisms. I've even looked at the American Moon program being fake. 
but Flat Earth is so far beyond that it defies any sense of credibility. Now here's another great point that Dr. Grande brings up, and that is the people that are in the Flat Earth movement tend to be in other conspiracies as well. 9-11, Pearl Harbor, the moon landings. A certain percentage of our population believes in conspiracy theories. The flat Earth is just another one. And I say, no one likes being tricked or conned or lied to, especially by people in positions of authority. Remember that as of today, no mainstream news outlet has let it slip that Santa Claus isn't real. Guys, I hate to tell you, but Santa Claus isn't a real person. He's a concept. He's a symbol. You know, the Easter Bunny's kind of the same way. But don't tell the reptilian overlords I told you. Starting to get a clearer picture? Unfortunately, yep. The scientist's head is spinning now. The institution of science cannot fall. Millions of hours of research, equation after equation, stacked on top of each other for centuries, all would come crashing down almost overnight. Lions and tigers and bears, oh my! Every scientific sector, every university science department would have to rebuild their models. It would be chaos. And after a long and uncomfortable pause, the scientist slumps back into his chair. You know, I've spent the better part of my life researching the different aspects of this world and others, relying on a seamlessly endless supply of qualified journals and articles, all reinforcing each other. That the heliocentric model was the best fit that it literally expanded our concepts and perceptions of not only the physical universe, but time, matter, and maybe even the building blocks of creation. Yeah, that pretty well sums it up, my friend. Pretty well sums it up. If we have to go back to the previous model, maybe the modern tools we have now will allow us to rediscover things with a new perspective. What does that do to all the work I've accomplished over the years? What place do I have in it? What am I now? And I said, you're free. That was just so moving. The old rules don't apply anymore. You now have a choice to make. You can forget that this conversation ever happened and continue building meaningless theories on top of a foundation made of smoke. Or you can join a community that questions everything and has a chance to build a world based on potential, not fear. Now, one last time. Look at that globe. Is that where you are right now? You know, The Stages of Death and Dying is from a 1969 book by Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. Now, I learned about that the first time when I was a paramedic student. You know, we dealt with people that were at the end of their life sometime. Now, obviously, as a doctor, I've seen people at the end of their lives as well. You go through these stages when you're diagnosed with inoperable cancer. You don't go through these stages when you're dealing with a change of paradigm in science. Let me give you a good example. This is me measuring the acceleration of gravity on my iPad sitting on my desk. There is a 9.81 meter per second squared downward acceleration towards the floor of my office. Now, if you come on out and try and tell me that's density, I'm not going to go through the stages of death and dying over that. I'm simply going to tell you that no, it's not density because there's no force 
of density. There's no acceleration in density. Now there's a force of buoyancy, but not of density. And by the way, in buoyancy, the acceleration that's acting on the mass is gravity. Now, I'm not going to go into denial or anger or bargaining or depression or acceptance or any of the other stages. I'm simply going to tell you that you're wrong and I can prove that you're wrong. And here is how you can prove yourself that you are wrong because you can do this on your iPhone at home. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the difference between science and skepticism and indoctrination and a narrative in a mass movement like the Flat Earth. Well, guys, thank you very much for stopping by. Be sure to reach down there and just click that little button in the lower right corner so that you can subscribe to my channel. So this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. We'll see you again soon. Thanks for stopping by. This rabbit hole's too deep for me. Feel my brain getting real sore.